Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church in our in-person and online service. We're so glad that you're here. We're continuing our series, Leaving the Wilderness, from the book of uh, Joshua. If you're watching online, I want to encourage you to say hello or go ahead and send in your prayer concerns or celebrations so that we'll have them ready for joys and concerns time. I have just a couple of items of upcoming events to let you know about. Of course, last night's service was postponed, so watch for a, a new date um, for, for that service. We have a, a retirement celebration scheduled um, for Rebecca Little at the end of the month. Um, one of the things that we're going to do is to honor her with contributions to two of her favorite ministries and programs. One is, is Kathy's Backpack, so we can, continue, so we can uh, finish those, um, the, the, the costs for that. And then the other is Feed America First, and particularly for our, our Packing the Rice and Beans project. So you can decide which one you'd like to, <laughs> which one you'd like to support in honor of, of Rebecca, and we look forward to to that time together. Also want to remind you of Reverend Kumar's um, daily Bible study, or, or nightly Bible study, I guess I should say, from 7 to 7.30, Monday through Thursday. Um, there's directions on the slides or, or um, in the newsletter on, uh, on our website that, that, that you can access that. It's, it's easy to do. Um, I, in a limited capacity, we'll begin Children's Church next week. So if you're a parent, I'm sure uh, April's already told you a lot about that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and we'll be doing that, sort of phasing it in slowly to try to keep everyone safe and, and yet be enga as engaged as we can. Let's worship God. Good morning, Bethlehem. How you doing out there? Thumbs up from the people watching online. The songwriter of this song said, this is not just my song, it's your song, it's everybody's song. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my too Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my too Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran your glorious day Saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The only knew Jesus when I met you. You called my name. Shelter, I was an orphan, 
Now you can love this air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Everybody pause while Craig takes off his mask and it gets prepared. <laughs> Good morning once again. It's time to share our God sightings and, and joys and concerns. We heard earlier that Steve's grandmother is watching this morning, so we're, we're glad that you could be with us. And we are thinking about you guys. I, I'm sure that you've heard that Steve's mother died this week, so we wanted to lift them up. Also, um, the Wybrews have had, have had us pray for little August, and he died yesterday, so please reach out to them and, and keep them in your prayers. I, uh, I do have a celebration. Um, we prayed for my dad last, last week. He had a heart episode. Uh, it, it is pretty serious. Um, they, they would like for him to have open heart surgery. He's opted not to do that, but um, the celebration is that he's made so much uh, progress spiritually, kind of a, a spiritual breakthrough. As I mentioned earlier, when I first became a Christian, when I was about 19 years old, I immediately went to work on my dad, of course, you know, and, uh, and he, he, one of the things he told me, he says, look, you know, you've been doing this for six or seven weeks, Let, come back to me after 10 or 20 years. Well, it's been 40 years. So go, Dad, and, and praise the Lord for being faithful. Amen. Uh, I had a good prayer with Dad yesterday, and that, that means so much, particularly in light of what he's, he's facing. Steph has a test tomorrow, so please keep her in your prayers, an endoscopy. Uh, Steve, do you have anything from our studio audience, or from our I, I don't have TV anything, audience? I don't have anything yet, but I will say... Uh, Special thanks to all y'all. This is uh, this was this was an awful week, um, but it could have been a lot worse if I didn't have um, a community to be who be praying for me, bringing us meals, to come sit with us. Um, I just I, I just can't imagine uh, doing it without y'all. And so thank you so much. And, and it really it gives you, it really hits home what the point of church is in so many ways. And and so. Um, Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been rough, but there's been highs and lows uh, through the grief process, and it will continue to be that way. And so um, thank you. I just wanted to say that. And keep, keep Steve in your prayers. I know that, that you will and you are, but he also begins seminary this, uh, this week. I know that the dean reached out to him. He had his psychological for the conference yesterday for ordination, so... Um, Real, pretty tough week on top of, of, of everything else, so thank you for your reaching out to him. We just mentioned August. We're praying for August. We love you guys and thinking about you. You bet. Right. Um, Heard from Mar Margo Woodruff yesterday. Sonny has tested positive for COVID-19 after their grandsons uh, uh, had dinner with them. Their grandson woke up sick. He tested positive. Um, Margo is negative, which I guess is a good thing. I mean, it is a great thing since she'll be shoving the food under Sonny's door or whatever it is you, you have to do when you're taking care of someone who's who's positive with coronavirus, but please, please pray for, for them. Heard a good report from Kevin King, whose father had COVID. He's had two negative tests now, so it looks like he's, he's making his way through that. Any, anyone else? Let's spend a moment in quiet reflection as we uh, move towards prayer.
loving and eternal God, we know that Joshua was great because he trusted in you and he listened to you and was willing to go the places that you had for him to go and do the things that you had for him to do. Help us to follow his example through the grace of your Son and the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to believe your promises and honor your commands and your word. We know that true life comes as we remain connected to you. Lead us out of our wilderness, the wilderness of sin, the wilderness of fear, the wilderness of despair, to the life and the land that you have for us. We pray for our world and for those who suffer, for those who struggle with disease. We particularly pray for Sonny and, and Charles and, and others with the COVID-19 sickness. We pray for medical researchers, for, for doctors and scientists who are working now so hard to, to find a, a vaccine or a cure. We pray for all who are suffering, all who are sick, for those battling mental illness and addiction, particularly in these difficult times. We pray for those who grieve, especially for Steve and, and his family and for the August's family. We pray that you would comfort and bless those who struggle financially in these times. Pray for those who are beginning new jobs. We pray for those pastors beginning new pastorates this fall. For those entering new school programs or returning to school, may, may you give them confidence that you're with them, that your desire is to bless them and lead them to a good place. And in what seems a new normal for, for now, help us all to have confidence that the one who got the, the people of Israel out of Egypt through the desert across the Jordan is there for us to lead us and guide us. We know that you're bigger than any obstacle, bigger than any problem we face. And so we lift up the celebration that we've heard and the concerns that have been named those on our hearts now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, <coughs> Are you even kidding me right now? We're supposed to do what? Joshua said what? Does he know what we've been doing for the last 40 years? We've been walking and now we get to Jericho. We're ready to go into the city and he says that we're supposed to walk again for how many days? What? He said that it's what God wants us to do. Well, I better get my shoes on because it looks like we're going on another walk. Can you imagine how the Israelites probably did feel when they got to the city of Jericho? They were ready to go in and Joshua said, hold up, we're not going in. We're gonna walk around the city one time every day for six days and on the seventh day, we're gonna walk around seven times. But on that seventh day, when they started, when they walked around the city and Joshua gave the signal, they blew their trumpets and they shouted shouts and sounds of celebration. And those big, strong walls came 
tumbling down in piles of rocks and rubble. And victory was theirs all because they did what God asked them to. Can you imagine again? There they were, realizing there's no one like our God. I sing a song with the preschoolers. It says, our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. Our God is faithful, and he asks that we walk with him faithfully too. When we obey God's commandments, when we do what he asks us to do, that's when we're walking with him faithfully. A lot of people who don't believe in God may look at how we act and think that we are crazy. They may not understand how come we do the things that we do at all. Because we can trust God. When we trust God, we'll do the things that he asks. We know that he's faithful. We believe in his power. We believe that his plans for us are good. And so it's easier for us to walk faithfully with him and to do the right thing. Will you pray with me? Dear God, you are so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that you cannot do. Please help us to follow your example and as your dearly loved children to walk in the way of love just as Jesus loved us and showed us how to love and serve others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, keep walking faithfully. I love the line that April said in that video. She said it a couple times. There's nothing our God can't do. Some of the themes in today's songs are the power of God over darkness, over fear, over anything we might go through. I had a good friend this week who called and told me that uh, his 16-year-old daughter, very fearful of what's going on, uh, tried to harm herself this week. She's getting the help she needs, praise God. But I'm reading articles all over the internet about fear and how many people have thought about hurting themselves through all of this. It's a real thing, man. Um, we try to not live our life in fear, but man, it's, it's real. The masks we like to wear, not the COVID masks, but the masks we wear on our face, like, oh, it's all good. We'll be fine. It'll end soon. And I've run into so many people that's just, that's just trying to cover it up. It's trying to cover up their fears. So, fear is real. You can't tell people not to have that emotion. But what you can do for yourselves, for your friends, is... Tell them that God's power can overcome any of this. We may not know when, we may not know how, but when we stand in His love, there's nothing our God can't do. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the light. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind And 
lesson this morning comes from the book of Joshua chapter 6 verses 1 through 7 15 16 and 20 let us hear the word of the Lord now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites no one went out and no one came in then the Lord said to Joshua see I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of horn, of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army advance, march around the city, with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Brian and Joe. Will you pray with me? And now silence, O oh Lord, all voices but your own. In these good moments, speak your word to us this day and this time and this place. Startle us with new and good truth. Give us strength to trust in you. 
and give us courage to follow the one who calls us into the future. For we pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are now in our third week of our five-week series, Leaving the Wilderness, from the book of Joshua. The first week, we saw that Joshua took a bold and courageous stand as he trusted in God and not in his own power. Last week, we saw how the Israelites crossed the River Jordan during flood stage when it was wild and, and, and high rapids. When they got to the other side, they built an Ebenezer, a memorial to remember everything that God had done for them. And you might remember we replicated that Ebenezer right here, the 12 stones from the 12 tribes that Israel gathered. Today we come to what has to be the most famous story in all the book of Joshua, and one of the most famous stories from the Old Testament, the Battle of Jericho. You know, if you think about it, there's usually two versions of the Battle of Jericho story, just like there's two stories of David and Goliath and Noah's Ark. There's a children's version, and we heard April share a little bit of that children's um, version. You can also look up Veggie Tales, Wall of Jericho uh, on YouTube, and you'll see another children's version, which is pretty entertaining. There's a lot, actually, that's left out of the children's version of this story for good reason, right? Some, some questions that we have that children don't have and probably aren't cognitively able to absorb and, and think through. So we're going to kind of look at the adult story today. After the people had left their wilderness, after they crossed the Jordan, after they raised their Ebenezer, after they celebrated Passover and their deliverance from Egypt. And in chapter 5, after all the men were circumcised, which is another part of the story often not told in the children's version, they faced Jericho, one of the largest Canaanite cities of that day, and probably the first walled city that any of the Israelites had ever seen. I've read a couple of descriptions that it was, that it was likely that there were two massive stone walls around Jericho. There was an outer wall, six feet thick and 20 feet high, and there was an inner wall, 12 feet thick, and 30 feet high with a 15 feet guarded walkway in between. It was a massive fortress, about eight and a half acres around. Verse 1 tells us the gates of the city were securely barred because of the Israelites. Everybody knew what was about to happen. The people of Jericho saw the entire nation of Israel cross the Jordan River. They knew they weren't just on a sightseeing expedition. They knew there was going to be trouble. Verse 2, we read how God tells Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. Things were going to get rough, right? There was going to be a battle. And I am not an expert on ancient Near Eastern warfare or any other kind of warfare, but that does seem to be 
an unusual tactics. God said to Joshua, here's what we're going to do. You are going to process around the city in an all-nation of Israel parade for seven days. And I kept soldiers. There was the people. There were the priests with the seven trumpets. There was the Ark of the Covenant and the rear guard. For six days, for six days, the people were to remain silent. The only sound were the seven priests blowing those seven ram's horns. You know, priests blowing the trumpets. Then on the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times. And the last time around, there was a shout, the trumpets blew, and the walls came a tumbling down. The walls of Jericho fell. And that's where the children's version of the story ends, right? That's where things get a little gruesome, a little rough, because all of Israel rush into the city. They run into the city. They annihilate every living creature, every man, every woman, every child, every animal, except for the prostitute, Rahab, and her family. Another part of the story, which is often left out of the children's version, Rahab the prostitute is spared. Everybody else is annihilated. They do take the gold, take the silver, and the precious metals for the treasury of the Lord, which I'll come back to next week. But there's so much violence, so much destruction that it often leads people to wonder, myself included, how can a loving God call for so much bloodshed? And there's lots of theories to interpret that event and all of the conquest of Canaan. Lots of theories. Some people say, well, That was the Old Testament God. But you know that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament and the God who sent Jesus to express God's heart. And Marcion, the early theologian who really championed the two God theory so much that he held there were literally two gods an Old Testament God and a New Testament God, was actually branded as a heretic. So that's not a real good, solid theory. It it might be good, and I think it is helpful, to remember that what we're reading and hearing is a description about 3,400 years ago. And it's not written to give us an account of a battle, of a military tactic, it's written to let us know, as Brian just sang, and April mentioned in her children's time, God is bigger than any problem we face. And I think it is worth noting that Rahab and her family were saved. The only person to show the Israelites any hospitality. She brought him in, she fed them, she sheltered them when all of the rest of Jericho wanted to kill them. I think it's also helpful to know or, or good to remember that while there is one God over the Old Testament and the New Testament, we do have the New Testament. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Jesus never, ever in the New Testament, in the Gospels, anywhere says, tells people to annihilate anyone else. Here's a little confession. 
Felicia may be disappointed in me, I don't know, but I think I'll always be puzzled about this text and text like it. And the truth of it is, I don't have... Okay, I hope that's okay, because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to. But I tell you what I do believe. I believe that God is a good God. And the, and the things that reveal God's heart of mercy and compassion and love far outweigh the puzzling text that I see. And I also say that if you read through the accounts of the conquest of Canaan, the Bible doesn't even agree on, on, on the violence. One big message of this text is what might seem impossible for us is not impossible for God. Like scaling over the 20-foot wall, six feet thick, only to come up against another, another wall, 12 feet thick and almost twice as high with a guarded pathway in between. What might seem impossible for us is not impossible for God. Can I get an amen? We are all going to face walls that we can't break through, break down, get through on our own. Anybody ever felt like you've hit that kind of wall, you face that kind of wall that you can't get through on your own? When I was about 19 or 20 years old, I had a maroon-colored GMC pickup truck, brand new. I bought it at Mike Nacarado's when they were down on Murfreesboro Road. Anybody remember that place? No bells, no whistles, a little AM FM radio, not stereo, but radio. But I loved it. I loved it. And I had a pretty good job. I mean, just basically right out of high school, I was a welder at the Nashville Bridge Company down below the Shelby Street Bridge, right on the river, basically where the Titans parking lot is now. Pretty good job, brand new truck. But my pastor at McClurkin Church of the Nazarene and these little elderly ladies at my church really wanted me to go to Trevecca. In fact, those little elderly ladies also known as prayer warriors, were praying for me to be called into the ministry. Told me that all the time. Craig, we're praying for you to be a minister. You should go to Trevecca. Well, the truth is, I didn't have, I wasn't opposed to going to Trevecca. I wasn't opposed to being a minister. It seemed kind of you know, you might as well have told me I was going to be the president of Cuba or something. Um, but the reason I couldn't go to Trevecca is that I had no money. And fortunately, my pastor invested enough time with me for me to admit, look, my not going to Trevecca comes down to one thing, and it did, a truck payment. I cannot go to Trevecca and pay my loan. Did I mention that I loved that truck? I loved that truck. And I couldn't sell it because I was, what's that term, fancy term, upside down, you know? I owed too much for the truck. Dave Ramsey would have been ashamed of me. Not only that I took out a loan for a vehicle, but 
that I took out too much money to pay for the vehicle, right? But there I was. Well, my pastor, my pastor, my spiritual guide, my mentor had a great solution. He said, Craig, let that thing go back. Let the bank repossess it. Well, I was like my buddy and my former parishioner whispering Bill Anderson, hey man, I'm poor, but I'm proud. We don't, we don't let vehicles get repossessed in my family. We work hard. We pay our bills. And all, all that was true. But he had a pretty good argument. And here's one of the things, and I think this is really what made the difference in me deciding to, to make the change. He said, look, he said, if you keep that truck in 10 years, it's going to be in the junkyard, especially the way you drive. I've seen you. But if you let it go back and you go to college in 10 years, you'll be a college graduate. Maybe less. Well, the wall to my going to school came down in a way I would have never expected. I called the bank, ate some crow, <laughs> gave the repo man the key to my truck, you know, I didn't make them have to come in the middle of the night and put it on the truck and haul it off. I literally gave them the key. <laughs> and I walked all over that campus of Treveca. But hey, 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 it gets, it gets good because about a year later, I bought a 72 Gremlin for $225 with a busted out rear window and a transmission with linkage so bad, three on the floor, that if you didn't shift perfectly, you'd be on the side of the road underneath trying to untangle your linkage. You know, there are walls and then there are walls. Sometimes the walls that we face our walls of our own doing. God can still tear them down when no one else can. God can tear your wall down. Sometimes that's frightening because sometimes we put up walls because we think they protect us. But they don't. But here's the cool thing and the amazing thing. It is incredible what happens when we allow God to take care of the walls around us and the walls before us. And we see those walls fall. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, it it is frightening when, when we face the walls that, that are around us and the walls that are before us because we do sometimes build them ourselves to protect ourselves or to hide behind. And yet, we know that you are our strong tower. We know that you are the only one who can protect us. So make us like Joshua, make us like Jesus to trust ourselves, to put ourselves in your hands. We pray through Christ, our Lord, our Savior and friend. Standing on this mountaintop Looking just how far we've come 
knowing that for every step you were with us kneeling on this battleground seeing just how far we've come knowing every victory your power is in us scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say yes our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful You are faithful, God, you are faithful Standing on this mountaintop Looking just how far we've come Knowing that for every step You were with us Scars and struggles on the way But with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful In every step we are breathing in your grace Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise You are faithful, God, you are faithful, it's true you are faithful, God, you are faithful. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, Never once did we ever walk alone, carried by your constant grace, held within your perfect peace. Never once, no, we never walk alone. Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Every step we are breathing in your grace Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise you are faithful, God, you are faithful, it's true. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. I guess I get to dismiss this. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. That was a freaking great message, man. <laughs> That was awesome. We all have those walls in our life. We, we wreck those walls every day, but God can tear them down. He can tear down your family's walls. Any relationship that's got a wall, he can do it. Just put your faith in him. Stand in his love and watch him come down. God bless. You're dismissed.